Take a look at this sentence. I went to his house and I told him the bad news. Look at this comma here. Do we need this comma here? Or could we take it out? I went to his house and I told him the bad news. Okay, what about this situation here? I went to his house and told him the bad news. What do you think in this situation? Do we need the comma here? Or no? Well, this lesson is about commas. And the first thing I want to say is that everyone will tell you different things about commas. Okay, so if you've heard very different ideas about commas, yeah, I want to acknowledge that. It's true. You go online, search for comma rules, okay, you're going to find lots of different opinions, lots of different ideas, okay? So everyone will tell you different things. So remember that, okay? So when I was a kid, okay, I learned this. I went to his house, comma, and I told him the bad news. Okay, so when I was a kid, I learned that this is the right way to do it. We need a comma here because each of these pieces could be separate sentences. Okay, we could say, I went to his house, period, I told him the bad news. Okay, they could each be their own sentence, but we're choosing to connect them with the word and. Okay, so we need a comma here. But in this situation, I went to his house and told him the bad news. Here, we don't need a comma because this piece could not be a separate sentence. Why? Told him the bad news. Because it doesn't have a subject, right? There's no I there. It doesn't say I told him the bad news. In the first example here, and I told him the bad news. Okay, so this could be a separate sentence, but this couldn't because there's no subject. So where is the subject here? Well, the subject is I over there. So each of these verbs, went and told, are sharing the same subject. That's why uh, we, we don't need a comma. Look, I went and told. If it was I went and I told, then we do need a comma. But if both verbs are sharing the same subject, then we don't need a comma. Does that make sense? Okay, let's look at this example. I asked her a question, but she didn't answer. Okay, so here we need a comma because she and I are both the subjects. Okay, we have two subjects here. So we have this piece over here that is a separate, it could be a separate sentence. And we have this piece here, she didn't answer, which also could be a separate sentence, and we're choosing to connect them into one sentence using the word but. So we should have a comma, okay? Now look at this example. She looked at me but didn't answer, okay? Here, we don't need a comma because this piece doesn't have a subject, okay? Didn't and looked are the verbs and they're sharing the same subject, she. She looked and didn't, okay? So that's how I grew up uh, learning this. But a lot of people would, would write a sentence like this. I went to his house and I told him the bad news. Okay, so they're not putting a comma before and. Um, like, I would put a comma there, I was taught when I was a kid to put a comma there. But I'm seeing more and more these days that people don't put a comma there. Okay, a lot of experts in grammar, they say that the purpose of a comma and the purpose of punctuation in general is to add clarity to the meaning of a sentence. Okay, and I agree with that. Okay, if punctuation isn't important for the meaning, well, I mean, is it, then why do we why do we need it, right? Because some sentences, if you follow old-fashioned grammar rules, some sentences can have so many commas. 
And then it's just, it looks bad on the page to have like four or five commas in one sentence. It's too much. It's too much. So a lot of people say, look, if the meaning will be the same, then just take out the comma. It doesn't matter, okay? So in this situation, the meaning is the same, right? I went to his house and I told him the bad news. Will the meaning change if we have a comma before and or not? No, it's, it's exactly the same. It's just as easy to read uh, and it means the same thing. So it's your choice. <laughs> Which one do you like better? I think they're both fine. Personally, I don't, I don't have very strong opinions about, about commas and about, you know, punct punctuation is good, okay? The purpose of punctuation is to make something clear. If a sentence is not clear, then it's ambiguous. It might mean this, it might mean this. Okay, those situations are really bad. So use punctuation. You need to use commas, use periods, use all these different kinds of punctuation marks to add clarity to the sentence. Okay, so punctuation is very important, but I don't have really strong opinions on commas. Okay, let's take a look at another situation where we use commas. In 2007, Kyrgyzstan abolished the death penalty. Okay, do we need a comma after 2007? In 2007, Kyrgyzstan abolished the death penalty. Well, again, when I was a kid, I was taught that we should use a comma uh, after introductory elements. Okay, the beginning piece, like in 2007 or um, before I moved to Kyrgyzstan, I lived in China. Okay, so before I moved to Kyrgyzstan, comma, I lived, so in those, those are called introductory phrases or, or introductory elements, okay? So the question is, do we need a comma after introductory elements? Or not. Well, some people say uh, yes, some people say no, uh, other people say uh, if it's more than three words, then you should have a comma. If it's three words or less, then you don't need a comma. Okay, look at this. When I was sick, they helped me. One, two, three, four. Here we have four words, so we should put a comma. It's more than, more than three, right? Um, but in this situation, before he left, he gave me a gift. Okay, so here we only have three words. One, two, three. Before he left, should we put a comma here or no? Well, it depends on who you listen to. Okay, um, when I was, like I said, when I was a kid, uh, I was taught this. Before he left, he gave me a gift. Now, the thing about commas is that one of the the functions of a comma is that it represents a pause in your speech. Okay, so the reason I think it's better to have a comma is because when we say this or when we read this, there's a natural pause here. Before he left, he gave me a gift. Can you hear it? Listen to me read this. Before he left, he gave me a gift. Okay, there's a short pause here. So I think it makes sense to put a comma in. But will the meaning change if, if we take it out? If we, if we say this, before he left, he gave me a gift. Well, probably not. Anybody reading this will know that there is a pause here, even if there's no comma here, right? So will it change the meaning? No. But is there a pause? Yes. So it's your choice. Do you want to put a comma in or do you not want to put it? I've heard a lot of different ideas about these things. So, you know, I think I'm humble about it. I don't know. I don't know the right answer. Really, there is no right answer. Okay, but um, there are some mistakes that people make using commas that are always a mistake. So you can't just use a comma anywhere you want in your writing, okay? You need to, to, to use it properly. And this is a really common mistake that ESL students make.
Okay, they say he ate the cake. He really enjoyed it. Okay, they put a comma here and this is a mistake called the comma splice. Why is it a mistake? It's a mistake because this is a separate sentence and this is a separate sentence. Okay, he ate the cake, period. He really enjoyed it. They can each be their own sentence and a comma is not powerful enough to join two pieces that could be their own sentences. A comma is not powerful enough. We need to use something else in place of this comma. Okay, so here's the first option. You could use a semicolon. This is called a semicolon. Okay, he ate the cake. He really enjoyed it. So that's good. Or you could do this. You could add a comma and and. Okay, he ate the cake and he really enjoyed it. Great. Or you could take the comma out, like I just explained, a lot of people write like this, even, um, even in professional writing, I see this all the time. He ate the cake and he really enjoyed it. Okay, so that's an option. Um, or your last option is this, he ate the cake, period, he really enjoyed it. There you're just saying, they're both two separate sentences. Okay, so that's a comma splice. Try not to use comma splices in your writing. But I want to know, what have you been taught about commas? I'm sure you've been taught some different things. I want to know what you've been taught. Then I can maybe help you a little bit better. So let me know uh, what you've been taught down there in the comments, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.